Hey folks, Mark here from Sea Wild Earth. Sorry, don't want to blind you. Um, now I've come out again to a nighttime foray uh, here in Okinawa. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly where, but it's uh, a beautiful evening. Uh, you might be able to hear in the background here. Yeah, we've got some uh, owls joining us for the for the trip. Um, my idea for tonight is I'm going to try and find some snakes. Okay, the temperature is such now that it's starting to warm up a bit. Uh, and I've already actually seen one on the road on the way here. The goal of tonight is I'm going to try doing, and I've tried, I have tried doing it already in the daylight, and it seems to work okay. Um, is I'm going to be doing uh, macro photography, but I'm going to be doing it with a difference. Um, I feel that my photography is getting a little bit stagnant with regards to um, macro photography, um, and as much as I like it, I always like to push the envelope a little bit and try and do something a little bit different. Um, so what I'm going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be shooting at a higher ISO than I normally would do, um, and I'm going to be backing off on the uh, light, on the, um, on the power of the strobes, because what I've found is that with a higher ISO, no need to use so much strobe, uh, and that way the light that you get on the subject, especially if it's a damp or wet subject, like a, a very highly reflective subject, like a frog, um, generally tends to give me a much better look on the subject. Um, now, I know some people are going to be saying, well, higher, higher ISO, higher noise, but is that too much of a problem? I don't actually believe it is, um, because nowadays with the technology that we've got with uh, third-party uh, plugins for noise reduction, uh, of which there are a whole bunch of them. Um, I think that there is um, the opportunity for people to start pushing their macro photography uh, and getting better results in using the technique that I'm going to try tonight. Uh, and hopefully I'm going to share that with you. If it fails, it fails. No one said we didn't try, but if it works, hopefully it will allow you to, to get out and try something a little bit different. You know, put a little bit of a boost in your macro photography, get you enthused to get back out there again, uh, and uh, yeah, find a new way of shooting. So uh, let's get into it uh, and get on with the trek. Now the reason that I look on these walls, uh, you have these retaining walls in some of the jungles up here, um, and um, you've got these little holes that you can see here, these little drainage holes, uh, and these are great hiding places for um, snakes, frogs, snails, all that kind of stuff. So I always stop and have a look and see if there's uh, anything hiding out because you really never know what you're going to find. And there's also always a lot of leaf litter along the side of these uh, roads. So you never know, you might find something hanging out in there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty wild. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 here's something funky. Hold on. <laughs> and sometimes you find hammerheads. Check this guy out. This is pretty wild. <sighs> Hold on, there he is. Okay, this thing, most people call it a hammerhead worm for obvious reasons. Look at the head on it. Um, now, you may want to be careful of these things because they do actually contain a neurotoxin very similar to that found in pufferfish, okay? Um, and they use that neurotoxin to immobilize their prey and to defend against predators. Now, like other planarians in their species, if they're accidentally cut into pieces, they can actually <laughs> recreate themselves and regenerate into so that each section then becomes a, a, a fully developed worm within a couple of weeks. And if injured, they can quickly regenerate any damaged tissue. Now this guy was super chilled out. He was uh, just on the side of the road uh, and with a very slow approach, I was able to get real close to him uh, and he didn't budge a muscle. This is actually um, Holst's frog, and it is a rare species found only in northern Okinawa. Um, it's currently, unfortunately, listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List. Now, it's also designated as a natural monument here in Okinawa Prefecture. Uh, this large frog is decreasing in numbers 
due to habitat loss and human intrusion into its territory. <sighs> and again on the walls, uh, this guy is the long-legged centipede, um, a really weird and strange looking dude, uh, and they actually run at quite a click, so uh, don't get too close if you're scared that they might uh, run and jump onto you, uh, because they can. They can get up to around six, seven uh, inches in length, and by that time they, they do look like uh, the monster from the Alien films. Now it wasn't long before I happened on these guys again. I could hear their calls as I walked along the side of the road. Uh, they are indeed the uh, green tree frog. Now they're starting to get into their mating time here in Okinawa uh, and I can see the remains of preemptive mating attempts uh, in the bushes uh, and that's exactly what this uh, white kind of um, foamy stuff is. Uh, this is the result of a mating attempt um, but as time goes on and when these frogs really get into their mating then the amount of this frothy white stuff all over the place in the bushes and vegetation of their areas where they are uh, will become quite uh, dramatic. So um, that's one thing that gives away uh, the season that we're in. But until now at the moment it seems that the frogs are quite happy to just uh, chill out on the vegetation and uh, call their intent as it were to each other. And here finally, just as the night was drawing on, I happened on this uh, beautiful specimen. In fact, there was two of these guys in close proximity. Uh, this is the Hime Habu. Uh, this is probably the most common uh, Habu that you're going to find in the northern areas of Okinawa. Uh, grows to a length, probably about 80 centimeters. Um, just a stunning animal. Uh, and the color variations of these can change from kind of like a lighter kind of gray with darker bands to this. Uh, common coloration that we see in front of us here, they're kind of like dark brown with almost black bands on it. Um, very, very telltale, kind of diamond shaped head um, due to the venom sacs that are kept behind the jaw. Um, now, this snake itself is populous around the Ryukyu Islands and up to Amami Oshima, uh, but in, a, in an area that's generalized as Okinawa. Um, now, the venom on this thing um, is like most pit vipers, it's mainly hemotoxin with cytotoxicity factors. And when folks are bitten by this, they, they either get bitten uh, when they step on it at night time, when it's out, uh, out and about, or when it's resting uh, generally uh, in vegetation or even in crops uh, in fields uh, during the day. Uh, now, while the venom of this snake is not necessarily life-threatening, um, people should still seek medical attention uh, as quickly as they can if they are bitten. Um, now, because of its relatively weak venom, there is no antivenom for the bite of this particular snake. Hey folks, back in the office. What a great trip that was last night. Uh, and oh, <laughs> I was running out of hope almost, but right at the end there we saw that, those beautiful uh, Hime Habu. Uh, so totally stoked with that. Um, now, once I finished filming, I did actually take some photographs. And uh, as you can remember early on in the film, uh, I did mention that I was going to be shooting at high ISO. And what I want to do now is just take a quick moment just to explain to you and show you uh, the difference between uh, what would be regularly... I guess considered to be standard macro uh, photography settings uh, as opposed to what I'm starting to shoot more and more with um, because I basically like the look. Okay, um, so we're going to jump into Lightroom now um, and I'll get into it and explain just what it is we've got. Okay, guys and girls, welcome to Lightroom. Here we are, and uh, these are the two images that I shot last night uh, once I'd finished. Um, once I'd finished my filming. Um, and what I want to quickly do is just uh, take a comparison look at these two. Uh, let's go ahead and click this area here. Okay, so we've got these, these are the two best images that I shot last night of the, uh, of the snake. Okay, so let's go ahead and just lock that so that we can uh, then move around and do whatever we want to do uh, with the shots. Okay, let's just get up. Now the golden rule with um, Wildlife photography is the eyes. If you've got the eyes nice and sharp, uh, then everything else just falls into place. Um, now here you can see here the um, uh, the eye of the habu, very very nice, very very sharp. 
the we've got the two images uh, we've got this one here which is the selected image um, now you can see uh, that absolutely nothing has been done with regards to editing of these two images let's have a look here in the main library uh, and normally when you've either cropped it or you've added any kind of uh, edit to it you have the two little icons in the corner here uh, none of which are apparent in any of those two images okay now if i was to look at say this one which this image on the left which is what is called the select image Okay, um, what you'll see down here on the right hand side is the ISO setting. Um, now I'm going to put the camera, uh, I'm going to flash the, the, each of the photo settings up on the screen uh, when we look at them a bit closer. But this one was shot at ISO 1250. Uh, and this one on the right, the comparison one you can see um, is ISO 320. Uh, now, because I'm using lower equipment, I don't know why they um, don't seem to communicate too well with the camera uh, but obviously the flash did fire although it's saying that it didn't fire here all right um, now what you can also see here on the select is that my shutter speed here was 1 80th of a second on this image here and on the right my shutter speed was 1 over 160. now i was using um, f8 for this one and f16 for the shot with the higher iso uh, and the reason i was doing that is because i increased the um i increased the uh, iso quite high uh, i closed down the aperture and because of the high iso i only needed a, a lesser amount of light in order to accomplish the um the expo the correct exposure for the image okay now if we come out um again wide you'll see that I was in different um, points of view for the snake uh, for each individual shot. Um, it did move a little bit and I guess I moved in a little bit closer as well. Um, but if we punch in again, okay, and the area that I'm most interested in are the darker areas, the shadows. And what you'll see here on the image that was shot at the higher ISO compared to the shot that was taken at the lower ISO, there is the noise um, in the darker areas here. Um, but my argument for shooting with this um, style of photography is that with the um, uh, denoise programs that we're using at the moment, uh, and I actually use um, Topaz denoise. Um, with the with the denoise programs, um, it really brushes up this area quite nicely. And what I'll do at the end of the video is I will again put this image up on the screen, uh, nice and large, uh, and zoomed in so that you can see the uh, how the that denoise program has handled this noise here. So how cool is that folks? Pretty uh, pretty awesome. Huh? I, I don't think there's a big difference and especially once you've got the um, the denoise uh, software plugged into the shot. I, I think they come out pretty good, especially if it's only going to be used for web or presentations, uh, things like this. Um, not a problem. Um, as I've always said, Photography is all about what you want to shoot uh, and the way that you want to shoot it. Don't think that you need to take photographs in order to please other people. The only person you need to please is yourself. OK, so bear that in mind when you are trying to um, push the boundaries, as it were, of photography and, and just realize that those boundaries are infinite. You can go and stretch this whole creative art form uh, in ways that you see fit, uh, limited only by the bounds of your imagination in order to accomplish art, because at the end of the day, photography is art. OK, so that's pretty much all I've got uh, time for for today. I don't want to drag it on too long, so I'm going to love you and leave you. Please do. If you haven't already uh, subscribe, hit that little notification bell so that you'll be updated as and when there's new content available from yours truly. Uh, and other than that, please also remember that now there is also channel membership. So if you wish to support me uh, in order for me to be able to dedicate more time uh, to creating content like this and uh, like the other stuff that I normally do on the channel, uh, please feel free to donate uh, the cost of a cup of, cu cup of coffee uh, on a monthly basis. And that would be awesome. Um, until next time, folks, stay happy, safe, sane, <laughs> and uh, above all, get out there and shoot. And please do share any of your shots or work with me. I'm more than happy to uh, take a look at that and even share it here on the channel uh, just to introduce your work to other people. All right, so take care, all the best. Until the next time.
Thank you.